Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to look at the Red Wiggler Cocoon Bin that's going into the Red Wiggler Grow Up Bin. Alright, so I have been kind of baiting these out and moving them to the other bin, and so let's see what we got this week. That's looking pretty good in here, isn't it? Some very nice red wigglers. Let's see what's left of their feeding zone. They are kind of looking like they're all over the place here, so that might not be a good sign. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the feeding zone anyway, even if it's not completely highly populated. I'm trying to just get some of these worms out over to the other bin. So, ready or, ready or not, here we come. Here we go. Over to the other bin. So, not exactly the pure specimen of sample of worms that I would like. but it is getting there. Some very pretty red worms in here. I'm just going to pick out some of that old bedding that I had. Make a space for a new feeding zone for these guys. I'm going to give them a little bit of the new bedding, just so it's easier for me to tell um, what I'm working with, which end I'm working with, rather. All right, this is going to be irresistible. They are going to love it. So I'm going to give them that pumpkin, and I'm going to give them some bedding. And then we're going to kind of just move it over to the edge. In case anybody's keeping track, if they're binging videos, still have the corn in here. I know that sometimes we were talking about how long does it take corn to break down. I don't even know at this point. It's been in there for a long time. So here we are. I'm going to pick through and grab some of the, the food items and move them over. Um, but other than that, I'm just going to kind of nestle that up to there. Uh, but I'm going to leave the lid off again for a while because it is getting wet again. All right, I will get this little bin out of the way, move the grow up bin over, and see how they're doing in their grow up bin. Here's the new population I just moved in, but let's take a look and see what the, the residents are doing. pretty wet, which at this stage of the bin, considering how much bedding you can see, I'm not concerned about how wet it is. It smells fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Good population throughout. All right. I will bring you back when I have the European night crawlers ready. All right, here we are with the European night crawlers. Let's see what they're doing this week. Oh, looks like we have some sprouts. That's fine. They will all eat. So let's move things around, see which end I fed on. This is getting ridiculously mucky. I'm going to have to totally leave the lid off this one. But we're going to move the sprouts over here to the, must have been the feeding end. But seeing some good European night crawlers here. Good size worms. And let's see what we get when we get to the feeding zone.
avocado. I think this t last last time we were in this bin, it didn't smell that great. Oh, holy cow. I don't know if you can see the uh, mite population in there. I think it's mites. That's crazy. They do like their avocados. Uh, these are not the kind of mites, and I'm going to start moving over as well, uh, anything that I find. Uh, mites are good for the bin. These are not the kind of mites that hurt your plants. These are composting mites. Um, so I was worried about that at first when I started uh, with the worm composting. I started seeing mites and I kind of freaked out a bit because I thought they were the kind of mites that were damaging to plants and I thought that I should try to get rid of them because they would eventually hurt my plants if I used the compost on my on my plants but the more I did some research the more I found out that um, different kinds of mites have different jobs in the ecosystem and the kind of mites that we find in our bins are not the kind of um, mites that are on your plants, or hurting your plants, rather. All right, get some bedding in there. Give them some pumpkin. This one froze outside, so it is going to be certainly some very easy access food for them. Give them some more bedding. Match them up a little bit there. And then I will bring you over to the garden. Alrighty. So, take a look. You can see they're already making some castings here. They're using the, you know, extra surface area to get themselves going. Hopefully, you know, let them grow up a little bit. It is the, the common belief that surface area is the determining factor for worm size, which is when I, I look at my raised bins out in my yard and I find worms out there that have probably been the, the progeny of my indoor bins, um, those worms are, you know, three or four times as big as the ones that I have inside my house. Just really big. So this is, is kind of an informal experiment. I'm changing them from a um, more compact bin to a more spread out bin and see if that doesn't get me a, a larger size worm. Which, um, you know, should the uh, plague ever quit, you know, maybe, maybe we can go fishing or something. All right. Well, that is the European night crawlers. And I'm not going to feed them anything extra. I moved the food over with them and they've got the sprouts in their bedding as well so I'm not going to give them any extra food uh, so that is where we're at currently with the transferring from one bin to the next with the European night crawlers and the red wigglers if you like the video give me a muddy thumbs up and if you're not already a member of my worm family hit that subscribe button and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it ring that little bell icon Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.